Hello, I'm Helen Farrell for the Florentine and I have a wonderful evening set up here with Simonetta Brandolina Dada, who is the president of Friends of Florence, incredible association that helps to restore amazing works of art in Florence and can't we, we just can't wait until we see them again. Welcome Simonetta, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you very much for inviting us here on the program and in the name of our board and all of our benefactors, thank you for thinking of Friends of Florence. Thank you. No, no, you're very welcome. I, I was saying just before we went on air here, I was, I was congratulating Simonetta and saying how, how wonderful uh, Friends of Florence is and, and also thanking you for your incredibly poignant words about how, impo uh, how important culture and art is to us right now as well. So uh, I, I think you've got a video for us, Simonetta, that we're going to see to describe uh, what Friends of Florence does. So we'll play the video and then we'll, we'll start chatting. Thank you. I well, apologize, there seems to be no audio on the video, which is a shame, but these are these live sessions are sometimes a little bit uh, odd in that respect. So uh, apologies to to our to our listeners. Uh, Simonette, perhaps you could explain to us, you know, what Friends of Florence does, what's its purpose, and um, when it, when the association began, what, what drives it all? Well, uh, we, we established Friends of Florence in 1998, and actually I'm a co-founder. The other founder is my sister, Renee Gardner, who's also on our board. Uh, so uh, I had uh, began to have an idea of creating a foundation uh, to safeguard and protect the artworks and uh, history and culture, really, in Florence and Tuscany at the beginning of the 90s. And uh, from that, uh, with the great efficiency of my sister Renee, uh, she actually applied to the US government to get a tax deductible status, a 501c3 as it is called in the United States, uh, which normally takes about a year. Uh, in our case, uh, Renee was able to gain that in six months. Uh, so once we put that together, we uh, put together our board amongst friends and 
associates, people who are really Florence and Tuscany in their hearts and who are enamored with art and history and cultural uh, and programs in general. Uh, and we started with our first project uh, in the main square of Florence, which is in the Piazza Signoria, obviously the Loggia della Signoria or Loggia dei Lanzi. Uh, so, so visible really, and it was such a great project. Um, it, you'll see that on our longer video. Uh, and from that, it's we've never stopped really from one having one major uh, project per year. Now we have between 20 and 25 projects per year. Uh, our benefactors are from throughout the world, the majority are from the United States. Uh, and uh, we're always growing. So we have not only uh, restoration projects, but we also have educational programs, uh, travel programs that we have created following certain artists with great historians. You saw some of them on the on the video previously, I'm sorry that it was mute, but uh, Ross King, uh, William Wallace, uh, Bill Cook, uh, Elaine, who you know well, Rocky Ruggiero has been historian of, with us, uh, Gary Radke. So it, the list goes on and on, and we have different themes. And invariably, when people come on our programs, uh, they uh, they too become completely involved in what we do, understand our mission perfectly well, and then go on to adopt projects as well. And maybe we could see some of this footage from, from the longer video and maybe Simonetta, you could talk us through, uh, you know, how, how Friends of Florence has reacted as well to, to the current crisis, which, you know, luckily Italy is emerging if we all behave ourselves, but how, how has Friends of Florence tackled the, the current emergency? Because it, it is affecting the arts, obviously, too. Certainly. When when lockdown started, we really, uh, obviously, all of our projects came to a screeching halt, uh, quite rightly, to protect uh, our restorers and um, not giving them access, uh, obviously, to labs or just to uh, restoration sites. Uh, having um, gone through the first month of lockdown, uh, we were obviously always connected with our uh, various restorers, directors of museums, and uh, people from the Superintendenza. Uh, we decided to pre-finance, so to speak, our restorers uh, because many of them were in difficulty, as many, many Italians and other people throughout the world are currently uh, without work, uh, without being um, paid on a, on a weekly or a monthly basis. So we actually went to our restorers and asked them to send us invoices uh, as a, so to speak, installment payment uh, towards projects that had already been uh, confirmed. Uh, you can imagine how delighted they were, and those fun that funding was very necessary to them. Uh, what you're seeing here on the screen is actually our, one of our uh, last restorations from 2018, uh, which was the restoration of the high altar in San Vignato uh, in, on the occasion of the 1,000-year anniversary of San Vignato. I'm sure many of the Florentines that may be following this were actually there for the uh, inauguration which lasted about a year. This, uh, this restoration took about a year to complete. Uh, the beautiful, beautiful uh, panels that they're taking down from the, this is at the very beginning of the, of the project, taking down from the main altar uh, by Agnolo Gaddi from the 1300s. Um, the beautiful Ciborio, as it's also called, uh, is, uh, was created also by Della Robbia. You'll be seeing some images of that. Two wonderful eagles, um, uh, in uh, 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 in gold and bronze, and uh, this is the lab where they're restoring the uh, actual paintings themselves, the wood panel paintings. Uh, but um, to go on about what we helped uh, doing during the COVID crisis, um, we also started uh, sending uh, every, weekly, every Monday, in fact, uh, yesterday, another video went out. We've been um, sending videos out uh, from all of our past projects. We have a wonderful uh, producer called Vid uh, Vincenzo Capalbo uh, from Art Media Studio, uh, who has been following all of our projects. We've always had them videographed uh, and photographed uh, during the whole course of restoration each time. And uh, so we've been sending those out so people can appreciate what we've been doing in the past. Um, the one that went out yesterday, in fact, uh, was on the, our very first project of Loggia dei Lanzi. It was wonderful to see the superintendent from then, Professor Paolucci, who was the sub, uh, superintendent of the Polo Museale at that time in the year 2000. Uh, that was a restoration that took two years. 
uh, and uh, it, it was uh, just a wonderful way to start, let's put it that way. Uh, one important aspect about our projects and also touches on uh, what is going now on with the COVID uh, crisis is that all of our projects are really financed prior to starting. Uh, we have larger projects um, such as this one in San Miniato. Uh, we also have uh, smaller projects where we have individual donors who might adopt a, uh, a single artwork or follow a certain artist. We have uh, two board members, uh, Kathy and John Dyson, who have um, systematically been restoring Pontormo and they did the whole uh, Caponi Chapel in Santa Felicita recently and also other Pontormos during um, the last 20 years. So we have um, two types of projects. Our, our larger ones are uh, approved by our board um, we uh, we find financing prior to the beginning of each project. We take a contract, so to speak, out <clears throat> a letter of agreement with the museum or the church or the superintendency, whichever it may be, um, so that we are able to pay the restorers directly. Uh, we pay the scaffolding. Uh, we finance all of the diagnostic tests. This is the beautiful Della Robbia portion of the uh, of the Chiborio, of the high altar of San Miniato that you're seeing now. Uh, and so we are able to keep uh, all of our budget intact. Uh, Timeline line is closely followed. Uh, and surprisingly enough, when people ask us how, how costly our projects are, we're able to also contain costs because we are following each of our projects so closely. Um, so in a nutshell, that is uh, a little bit of how we work. Um, I'm obviously in living in Florence, so uh, visit all of our projects with other board members regularly. Uh, and then we normally will have a program or an inauguration, but usually a, a, an educational program around uh, we, each of our major projects. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know if that answered your question fully, oh, yeah. but it's a little bit what we're doing. And these are absolutely beautiful, beautiful images, and it gives you an idea of, of the level of, of skill and, and preparation required to, to re restore these. I guess we're very fortunate in Florence that we have, you know, this level of expertise, you know, that, that internationally, really, there are restorers of, of the highest caliber um, in the city. So, I mean, that's that's fortunate. How, how do you actually decide? I mean, there's so many works of art that require restoration in Italy and in Florence. How How... How do you make that decision? You know, which projects you're going to work on and unfortunately which, which ones you're unable to do so at, at any time, you know? Yes, uh, well, it, it, at the beginning, uh, we went to the superintendency. So at the time, as I had said before, it was Professor, Professor Paolucci and we asked him what the most urgent restoration was uh, to be done in the city. That was in the year 2000. And, and his reply was uh, the rape of the Sabines beneath the Loggia dei Lanzi. Uh, when our board went there to see the project, uh, all of the, we saw that all the other marble statues as well need, were in uh, serious condition and needed um, a conservation. So we actually went to Professor Paolucci, we said we'd like to do all of the marble statues. Uh, obviously I'm saying marble because there is the Cellini bronze there that had already been restored and we obviously uh, did not restore that, it had just been completely um, safeguarded. Uh, so that that was our first project. And then from there, the director of the Museum of the Academia Gallery uh, at that time, um, Franco Folletti, approached me and it was uh, 2003. And then we restored all of the 22 paintings around the David uh, as our second major project. Uh, from there, time, you know, going forward, 2004, it was the actual 500th birthday of Michelangelo's David. Uh, so... Uh, Frank uh, Faletti asked us if we could be involved in that project. We helped do the diagnostic tests <clears throat> and also create a DVD for that project. Uh, and we continue to do maintenance work uh, since the year 2004. Uh, every year we help to uh, preserve and maintain the David and the prisoners and also the uh, plaster of the Rape of the Sabines, which is inside the Academia Gallery. Uh, so that has been an ongoing process uh, approved by our board uh, and uh, that, you know, two or three, uh, every two or three months, uh, there is uh, maintenance uh, done to the David and to the other statuary by Michelangelo there. 
Uh, and, and from then on, we've always had at least 20, uh, between 15 and 20 projects a year. Uh, as I was saying before, some are individually chosen. Um, uh, we've been doing also with our Florence chapter, we have a large community here in Florence, uh, headed by two co-chairs, uh, Kate Collins and uh, Allison Gilligan. And also uh, Diana Richmond was also originally uh, one of the chairmen of our Florence chapter. And with them, it's, it's an interesting uh, process there. We have been restoring the tabernacles around the city, really examples of public art, uh, beautiful tabernacles. Uh, as of now, we've been doing them all in the Ultra Avno area, uh, but we now have our questionnaire out to all of our Florence chapter asking people to photograph tab tabernacles that they see that they uh, think should be um, seen by Friends of Florence to, to restore. And it's an interesting process there as well because we work hand in hand with the Comitato dei Tabernacoli, uh, which has existed in Florence with the uh, Amici dei Musei for many years. And they uh, thankfully do all of the bureaucratic work for us, uh, that is asking permissions for the tabernacles, uh, arranging the, the ultimate presentation of the completed work. Uh, and so that is a, a wonderful collaboration that we've created. And we've gone on also <clears throat> to uh, donate funds to the Angeli del Bello uh, here in Florence to make sure that the tabernacles around the city, not just the ones that we've restored, but other ones as well that are clean uh, and um, kept pristine, uh, because obviously being outdoors, that is also a problem that presents itself. And these are all wonderful projects. You mentioned about keeping the David clean. I'll never forget that cover on the New York Times magazine with them sort of like almost like a, a hoover, you know, keep keeping the David away. I'll never forget that, that image that was there. And in terms of my, Michelangelo works, I mean, you've, there was the, you were involved with the um, the open restoration of, of the disposition, the disposition at um, the Opera del Duomo Museum as well. Am I correct? That's that's, that's right. That's yeah. right. And it's um, and that too is now restarting again. Obviously, it had to be stopped uh, with the lockdown uh, with our wonderful restorers uh, and a, a, a continuing relationship with the Opera del Duomo. We have also uh, in the past done other wonderful projects with them. Uh, the one that is, we're now doing is a live restoration for the Pietà, uh, Bandini Pietà and the Opera del Duomo Museum uh, will again be visible um, now that the museum is reopening. Uh, wonderful project. Uh, there too, we have uh, our historians and obviously Monsignor Verdon, the director of the museum, <clears throat> who is uh, heading all of that project along with the foundation itself for the Opera di Duomo. And uh, I think it, it will have some interesting results from that as well when that is completed. Uh, and you've also, you're also working on a project outside of Florence, is that correct? Yes, um, because our mission really is not only Florence, but also of Tuscany. Uh, in the past, we helped, uh, we actually financed with the um, Badia di Passignano, we, we financed the restoration of the Last Supper there by Ghirlandaio. Uh, and uh, from then, uh, we've also been doing helping with projects in Arezzo, and, but we did just start um, last year uh, the restoration and it's, it's more of a research project as well uh, to, uh, to really explore the stability tests of the pulpit by Giovanni Pisano in Pistoia, uh, which is problematic. Uh, we're trying to say it's, it's quite a lengthy study that we're involved with with the University of Florence, the superintendency. Uh, to see uh, how that pulpit is reacting, uh, because in the past, in the 1600s, it was actually moved in the church of Sant'Andrea and Pistoia uh, to, a, to its present position. Uh, it wasn't originally in that position, and there are some problems there and stability, and then obviously we'll be restoring as well. Um, I find interesting with the, just going back to the COVID situation that, you know, the first reaction and the reopening of Italy was Yes, they reopened the bookshops and also they allowed art restorers to resume their projects. Do you think, someone else, this is sort of a, a vote of confidence in terms of this is the importance of the arts in Italy? Yeah. 
I mean, as we move forward, I mean, the arts could be penalized, you know, or, or more value could be placed on them. I wonder if you have a perspective on that. Well, um, it, when they first put out the first, um, let's say, statement on who could go back to work, they had, uh, so to speak, forgotten to mention the restorers. Uh, so there was a, a quite a, a strong protest by restorers uh, and that seemed to work. So uh, thankfully uh, they they went back and included restoration in, in the original statement done by the Italian government uh, because restorers were always protected. Uh, they wear masks, they wear gloves. Uh, they usually are working or in studios alone or very carefully on various in various um, cantier and various projects. Uh, so yes, I'm, I'm, I, I'm a naturally an optimistic person. So I'm hoping that more funds will be going to culture here in, in Italy. Uh, I would love Italy to do a project um, or a program uh, like the US did during the Grand, Great Depression in the 30s where they actually funded young artists uh, mm -hmm. to create works. And, and the result of that were artists such as Jackson Pollock and others uh, who came forward and became great creative energy uh, and created masterpieces. Uh, so hopefully uh, they will eventually fund also younger artists and, and uh, contemporary artists. So uh, a new vein of art can be created here in Italy as well. I mean, that would be wonderful. I mean, if, if we saw this sort of new renaissance that people have been talking about, I mean, we're a long way from it right now, but, you know, hopefully these great crises in our lives have always produced uh, a creative reaction. So I guess we can, we can okay. be hopeful in that direction. That's right. We, we've also, um, another uh, innovation that we did in the last few years is, is working together with other organizations. So uh, for the uh, anniversary, the 50th anniversary of the flood that occurred in 1966 in Florence, but also in Venice, we actually did a joint project with Save Venice. Uh, Friends of Florence helped to restore a Tuscan artwork in, in Venice and Save Venice helped restore the beautiful Tiepolo albums. Uh, drawings uh, that are in the Horn Museum. So that was a, a wonderful partnership, so to speak. And we just completed last year uh, a restoration of the beautiful Frangelico Annunciation that's in the P Prado Museum in Madrid. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that then went on to be the centerpiece of a wonderful, beautiful uh, exhibition on Frangelico and on the beginning of the Renaissance in the Prado Museum. Wonder, and that's something you mentioned in your words for us this month is how how art fosters uh, empathy and bridges divides and uplifts spirits. And I thought they were wonderful words and words that we need to treasure right now because I think values are more important than, than any other time. And we've had the wonderful news today that the Bobbly Gardens will be reopening this Thursday. So that's one yes. step towards, uh, towards exploring our, our cultural spaces again in the great outdoors. Uh, please do write in if you've got any questions for Simonetta, by the way, or people who are tuning in. We have people from Florence, we've got people in the States, we've got somebody from Poland, and they're all very complimentary of, of, uh, of everything that Friends of Florence has, has done over the, over the years. Um, you're also working on some upcoming projects at, Sa at the San Marco Museum, Simonetta, I believe. Maybe you could explain to us right. what, what those will entail. Yes, in fact, uh, we'll be putting out a press release at the end of this week uh, because, um, as many of you may know, it's the 150th anniversary of the Museum of San Marco in Florence. And uh, we have uh, agreed and already uh, found all the financing to uh, renovate all of their main gallery there. It's called the Sala dell'Ospizio. It's this, it's the grand salon where at one time pilgrims would stay on their pathway to, on their walk to Rome uh, when stopping in Florence. And now it's the home of many of, many of the uh, grand altarpieces um, of Frangelico. So uh, the lighting, the uh, climate control, all of the signage, the glass, uh, all aspects of that uh, beautiful room will be uh, updated uh, thanks to Friends of Florence. But not only, we also have uh, just started uh, with Lucia Biondi, a wonderful restorer here in Florence, uh, the restoration of uh, jo uh, Frangelico's uh, panel that's called Bosco dei Frati. Uh, this is um, a very large panel. It just arrived in her studio last Friday. Uh, so we were. that's another sign that uh, the COVID crisis is slowly passing. Uh, and uh, we're actually due to go and see that with the director of the museum next week. 
Oh, wonderful. That's good to, knew, good to know that these artworks are arriving and that the work is ongoing. It's wonderful. wonderful. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, another very important project uh, is the restoration of the chapel of the Cardinal of Portugal, which is in the Church of San Miniato. And uh, this is a wonderful story that I'd like to share with everyone. Uh, because it was really uh, mana from heaven, as they would say. Uh, one day, my sister wrote to me from the United States saying that they had, our office had been approached uh, because there was a legacy left to Prince of Florence. Of course, first reaction was, oh, no, this must be a scam. Goodness, good, you know, let's not give any details away about bank details or whatever. But then what actually happened was um, Professor John Cherubini who we never met, he would come every year to Florence. He has a cousin who lives nearby in Ponta Sieve. He would come every year to Florence. He was a professor of classical studies, Italian studies. And without ever contacting us, he slowly followed all of our projects. Uh, one of the aspects of our project, obviously of different restoration projects is that we uh, have a plaque uh, or a descriptive panel applied nearby after the restoration is completed with the donor's names and, and description. And so he was able to follow all of our work and left, um, when he passed away, he left a very, very important legacy to Friends of Florence. And with that, we're restoring the chapel of the uh, Cardinal of Portugal and a portion of his uh, donation is also going towards the restoration of Michelangelo's Pieta in the Cathedral Museum. What a wonderful story. <laughs> it is, really. The really. amount of love that's driven, you know, towards this city is quite overwhelming. I'm sure you're, you, you see it on a regular basis. I know we certainly do. And, and, and to know that somebody was thinking about Friends of Florence as well and thinking of the future and future projects is extraordinary. It truly is. It oh, truly is. That's wonderful. Um, Simonetta, I mean, I, I've always wondered, I mean, maybe you could explain, how can I, how, how can people get involved as well with Friends of Florence in, in what you do? I mean, uh, I, I imagine people can donate in terms of can people volunteer as well. Maybe you could explain to us if there's yeah. people out there who want to do something good after the lockdown, how can they get involved with your organization? Well, uh, they can certainly contact us with our, um, by our website, which I see is here on the screen, uh, and uh, send an email. Donations can be made online as well with a credit card. Um, a very interesting way to get involved also is to attend some of our programs or uh, here in Florence when we have, we have regularly, uh, usually about once a month, a program, a conference, an event with our Florence chapter. And we announce that on our Facebook page and, <coughs> excuse me, and on our website. And, uh, and we'd, we'd love to have more and more people involved, especially if they're living here in Florence, because we can see them on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, otherwise attending programs, we often will have programs or events in the United States or uh, where um, certain projects go, for instance, like in the Prado Museum or in Venice or, or other uh, venues. Uh, often when our projects are completed, they will travel. When we were helping with the Gates of Paradise, uh, three of the Ghiberti panels traveled extensively in the United States. So we were able to have events in Chicago and in Los Angeles and at the High Museum in Atlanta. So various um, artworks have traveled and hopefully we can see many of our benefactors abroad as well. That's wonderful. And uh, people are tuning in here and saying how much they they appreciate the great work that you do and the amazing work that you do and everything else. So this, this is wonderful news. And of course, there's people who can't wait to get back to Florence, can't wait to come and see these artworks in situ. We hope very much, and I'm sure Simonetta agrees that we'll, we'll be able to welcome you back soon, but not tomorrow. Um, <laughs> So, but uh, it, it, it is always really amazing and how much love there is for the city of Florence and well for Italy in general, but for, especially for Florence and Tuscany. And I think there's an affinity with Florence uh, in that uh, people really perceive uh, that this is part of their heritage as well. This is not just uh, the masterpieces here, smaller or larger treasures that they might be, are not only for Florentines and not only for the Italians, they're really for the world because it's really the basis of our civilization that we're seeing and that we're helping, that we're protecting, not only for us, but actually for future generations. So there's so much to do. Um, I will often speak to people about um, our work and, and invariably somebody will say, oh, well, why don't we do Friends of Rome? Why don't we do Friends of Naples? Why don't we do Friends of Palermo? 
and, and I agree, they, they could be countless friends of uh, throughout the world. But I must say that Florence has a certain affinity uh, that really remains in people's hearts. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that's that's what Mary Louisa was thinking when she she arranged that that pact at the mm -hmm. end, you know, to keep the Medici legacy alive, and it's still very much that way today. So, yes, you know, we, we need to think about the future. We need to think about humanity and protecting everything that this wonderful city has. And in it, if you do have time, people out there, and you would like to be involved, then I'm sure. Simonetta and organization would, would love to, as you've already said, would love to welcome you and embrace you into every, all the work that you do. Oh, definitely. So, yeah, now, um, Francesca is saying, how can we join the Friends of Florence? Um, there's a website there running along the screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can write to us. We'll put you on our database so you'll uh, have the various uh, uh, updates, newsletters, um, and news of programs that we're doing. Uh, or also to receive the videos. For instance, we'll be doing this video every Monday. It's being sent out uh, until Christmas. And so uh, really it will we'll pass over on July and August because most people are traveling, hopefully then, <laughs> but uh, we'll recommence in, in September. Uh, so you can learn about our programs, exactly. Thank you very much, Simonetta, for, for joining us, for explaining all the all the terrific work that you do. And uh, let's stay in touch and make sure that we sp keep spreading the message of about all of your restorations and, uh, and keep spreading that love for Florence. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you. Thank you. Speak soon. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.